Hey Silver Tubers, it's Mr. Z coming to you from the Silver Pouring Bench. It is Saturday the 14th and in Oklahoma it is uh, in the 40s and tomorrow it's supposed to be in the 70s and yesterday it was in the 80s so ah, gotta love life in Oklahoma. So I'm sipping hot tea because I've been outside a little bit this morning so in my crossbreed holster mug here. I was just gonna go over what I picked up this week. I had to let loose of a, uh, a one ounce single hard gold bar today to pay for some medical bills, which was a bit of a heartbreaker, but that's what we stack it for, an emergency. So I'll show you what I did pick up though, cause I wasn't gonna let that keep me down. Um, in the past, I've been picking up these when we get them, these A-Mark rounds, I like them because they're dated. And I just like the design on them. I like the, the Liberty Bell. Um, and I just think they're cool. And I never really paid attention to the dates. And then I realized that they made them multiple years. I thought, because I had a bunch of these that were 82, 82, 82, 82. I thought, well, maybe they only made them in 82. And then I ended up with an 85 and an 87. And so when I was at the... LCS, so we'll lay all these 82s out. Let's let's move some stuff around here. Lay all these 82s out I've got right here. Well, when I was at the LCS, we had some come in, and I started paying attention to the dates, and I know they are private mint. I know there's not really anything special about them, but they I really kind of dig what's going on here with the collection. So now... We have a picked up five of them. We have an 85, 84. Oh, that's something else right there. So I'm going to put these in order. So we had the 82s, and here we have an 83. And here we have an 84. And here we have an 85, which we have two of those now. 85s and here we have an 86 there we go 86 and lastly we have an 87 which looks like it really literally just rolled off the mint um, but and if anybody out there knows how many years they produce these I'd be interested um, because I, I'm planning on doing a complete date run of these which means I might have to start hunting down some some of the rarer dates but they're all the same the same uh, round, just different years, and I kind of dig them. Uh, the other pickup I had this week uh, was this one ounce um, one ounce Alaska 25 years round. And when I first saw the top of this, I wasn't well, I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. It's okay. Yeah, nothing really special until I flipped it over and saw this was actually produced by Johnson Matthew. Um, one ounce Troy fine silver 999 JM with the cross, uh, the pick and the, the hammer cross at the bottom. And then I thought, okay, I've got to have that. So that's the other pickup, and it's got a it's got a nice design. It's it's still got it's got lots of toning, um, but it's got you know really high polished fields and then matte matte finish on the flag and on the lettering. So Johnson Matthew once again, that's a uh, home run. As far as the pouring front goes. Uh, I got a shipment uh, of coin scraps in um, from a friend of mine who does coin uh, coin uh, rings. So I've been playing with 90% silver and pouring some 90% silver, uh, some of the classic. You can always tell less than pure because you get a little bit of that, that puckering. That happens a lot of the times with uh, sterling silver and it certainly happens with 90% silver. And you get some odd layering going on. Um, but as far as the uh, mold surface itself, you get a pretty decent pour. And it polishes up really shiny. I mean, it polishes up as shiny as Pure does, which is surprising to me, but it does. So there's that con concave tree of life. This is a, uh, a hammered loaf that I went ahead and, and buffed on the buffing wheel and left the compound to give it that antique look. Um, but the sides are still, it's a muffin top loaf. 
the sides are still high polished and so is the back and so that was another pour that I did and I've done several of these out of this batch these little this is a little uh, 20 gram uh, off-center strike button I left the side uh, brush finished and then I po high polished the top and like I said I left the polishing compound in the in the recesses to give it a little more definition um, have it stamped the back but these will all have to be stamped uh, 0 0.900 to make sure not to confuse them with the three nines pours that I do and so that's uh that's about all I got uh, this week oh there's one more what year is this one 80, oh, another 87, so I've got two 87s as well. This one's got a little bit more toning, a little bit more age to it. So I've got two 87s and a stack of 82s and two 85s. So it looks like 83, 84, and 86 are the ones that uh, we must not see that often. Um, but really the highlight of the week was this jewel right here. So my son and I were corn roll hunting, and he said, Dad, this is in here. This isn't a half dollar what is this and he handed it to me and I was I was like are you serious it's a literally a 1910 Indian one rupee that was in a roll bank roll of half dollars and the funny part is these coins are 0.917 pure instead of 90% pure and so it's a 1910 one rupee that we found coin roll hunting <laughs> go figure so anyway it's uh like i said it's saturday super windy cold here got some family in town but i thought i'd break away and uh, do a short little video just to say hi to everybody out there hope everybody's doing well and uh i appreciate everybody watching and probably gonna do i've got a special request pour for a uh, a birthday coming up so you're probably gonna see that here pretty soon maybe tomorrow uh, part of our fence in the backyard blew down, so I'm going to be working in the backyard some tomorrow. But maybe I'll take a break and uh, make that pour for that individual. So, in the meantime, cheers. It's Mr. Zeke from the Silver Pouring Bench. Have a wonderful weekend.